So this should be fun. Um, what we're going to paint today is, well, not tonight. I'm going to prep this tonight and then we're going to paint it tomorrow. But it's going to be another one of those dragon swipes. And I just took two pieces of wood and taped them together with the sandwich in between. But it was some of that vinyl that I've, I've gotten from Amazon. Oh, and that's another thing. I have uh, put links down below on the video for information because I'm starting to have a lot of people asking me um, where I get my supplies, what I use, that kind of thing. So um, I partnered with Amazon and I am an affiliate now. So what I'll do is just put a link of the things that I use generally that I get through Amazon and I'll, and Dick Blick because I get a lot from them too, but I'm waiting on some stuff from them. Um, so if you see something here that you want to get, chances are generally you'll find it in that list below with a link and the cool thing about that is that if you go through that link and you buy through Amazon uh, through my affiliate program I get a little tiny percentage of that so it helps me out in affording to do these videos so thank you so much and thank you to the people who have donated to my channel um, it, it makes you feel good and makes me want to do more so let's do that today we are going to work on it's a cabinet door panel is what it is, but it's a blank. Um, it's hardwood, so it's a very nice wood. But what I mean by a blank is, is that it's not drilled for, for brackets or anything. It's just one slab piece. So what I plan on doing with it is, since it's a raised panel, I can't, I don't really want to mess this up or have paint going down in that. So I'm going to tape it off all the way out to here. I'm going to paint this center panel here, the, the highest elevation of this center panel. panel. And when I get all done, the outer sides here, I'm going to stain with this dark java. Uh, what I'm going to do, and I've already done some cleanup on this because it's been in my studio for a while. I've got a handful of them over in the corner of different sizes, and uh, I decided to attack one of them. So here we go. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tape around this ledge first to get a really good, you know, seal or edge on this because I, I don't want to be messing with this edge because it could really go wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to tape that all up. Uh, once I get that done, I'm going to pro I'm gonna use some, probably some wood glue and just with my finger, I'm going to wipe it down to make a seal between that edge of the paint and the surface. And while that's drying, I'm going to be plasticking and taping the rest of the panel so that I'm not going to get paint anywhere else. Uh, because once we pull all this apart and I stain this wood on the outside, I'm hoping It'll be really cool. So uh, after I get everything taped up, I'm going to just sew this and get it all prepped so it can dry overnight for tomorrow. Let's do this.
much primer on this, but okay, that just means it's really, really primed. Okay, well, let's get this dry. And it's a new day. I've got uh, my cabinet blank all primed, taped, ready to go. I had a few issues with that, but we overcame. And today we get to do the fun part, the painting part. So I'll go over these really quickly. I mixed all these myself, so there's little bits and pieces of everything in this, but I'm doing something obviously primarily blue today. Um, I had them lined up lightest to darkest, and then I took the second line of the darker and interspersed them, so we're going to kind of go back and forth. That's the plan. It's always an experiment. I also, at the very last second, stirred up just a little bit of gold in case I want to put something warm through this. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but it's there just in case. Everything on the table, except for the black and white, all of the colors and the gold are acrylic paints and flood float troll. This stuff right here. And it's a latex paint additive that I use as a pouring medium, or I should say in place of pouring medium. It's not the same thing as pouring medium in any way other than they're both additives. And they both start out milky and dry clear. So that's about where the uh, comparisons end. So the rest of these, I've got silicone in these. I don't have silicone in the black or the white, but I have silicone in all of the colors. And I just sprayed them in the cup when I was done and slightly mixed them so they're barely mixed. I can even see silicone floating on some of these, which is fine. So what I'm going for today, let me move some of this stuff here. And that's the silicone I use, CRC Heavy Duty. Works great. I haven't tried the tre treadmill silicone oil yet. I want to, but I can't be buying supplies twice over when I can't afford the first ones. So um, I'm going to be lacing in black and white here and there to maybe make some depth or pull out some shadows. This is all a plan, like I said, and if you know pouring, <laughs> then you know that all of that prep is usually for nothing. But we're going to try it anyway. So here's the sleeve I'm using today. I've decided to go ahead and name this one 70s Fringe <laughs> because it's just like the uh, swipe I used, or a lot like the uh, Dragon Swipe uh, I used on the last big one, but this is smaller. And what I did on this one, I hope you can see it because I've noticed in the past this doesn't video very well. I cut it with scissors about, I don't know, two inches from the bottom up and I did it in a squiggly line because I don't want it to run flat. I kind of want it to be a little off so that it may twist and turn as it's being dragged and do something to the paint. That's part of the experiment as well. So that's what that looks like. And I just sandwiched it between two boards and taped them together. Making another tool. So I'm going to get everything moved and recheck to see that we're, uh, you're seeing this okay. And we'll get started. <laughs> paint on the bottom of that so we get a fair start here I wanted to 
wave it just a little bit at the end. Okay, good thing I have that whole thing ticked up pretty good. I got so excited about doing this that I forgot to put my gloves on again. <laughs> but that okay. Oh yeah, look at this puddle over here. Well, last time, third time was the charm. This time, I think the double swipe did it perfectly. God, the blues are blending beautifully. There's a couple of metallics in here. That really, really light blue that's in here. Um, that's a metallic. What was the other one? Oh, the other one was one of the really dark blues. Had some metallic in it. I'm pretty happy because I was nervous about the black. I didn't want it really to jump in there and take over, but I did want some distinction, you know, that it gives when it surrounds some of these cells. All right, well, I'm going to do some cleanup here, and then I'm going to come and get you so you can see uh, what I'm seeing. All right, first, this really expensive tool that I found. I don't know how to work. It better work good. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, this is a piece of a pap uh, paper towel roll that I cut up. With. <laughs> it was just an idea. I thought, how am I going to get that paint out of those sides so that they don't dry into big gunk? And that's what this is. I really don't even care if it leaks, as long as it doesn't leak on my painting. I just want to get this out of there, because the only part that's going to show is this very top part. always mix my paints and I can't let them sit. I tend to paint right away. And the last time I did that was on the last big swipe I just did and there was bubbles galore all over in that and that was my own fault for letting it sit there or not sit there. So today I mixed a little early and let them sit here for about an hour. And that's when I came back out, added a couple sprays of, of Floetrol or excuse me of uh, silicone and then did a little quick mix but I'm so far really happy with this. I didn't know really what I was planning. I was just planning my best so that something would come out of this, and I, I think it did. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of some more bubbles here, because there's a few of them, and I don't want bubbles in this. Um, and then I will bring you down here to see this. And I hope my lights don't play too badly into this, but I can zero in. Kind of get an idea. And I will get some close-ups here, too, hopefully around the lights. Most of them, anyway. Yowza. Yeah, I'm kind of digging this one. The colors are playing well. Of course, how can you go wrong with a lot of blues? But I just kind of felt in the undersea world type of mood when I was picking colors for this. So, I mean, that's where you can start with one or two or three colors, like I did, of blue, and then just add grays and greens to them and, and just play with them together because they're all in the same family, so you know they're going to look good together. I uh, That's why I felt the need not to use that gold. Um, because in the end, these cooler colors, I'm trying to get where the camera will maybe not get as much. There we go. Maybe not get the uh, glare so bad. But there she is. I'll put it all together and be a voila moment. Well, for you it's instant though because here it comes. 